The Lord Yahweh is the beast, according to the Bible, in Daniel 7, 3-7, Hosea 13, 4-8, and Revelation 13, 2. Isaiah 13, 8 says, They, Yahweh, come from a far country, from the end of heaven. The Lord Yahweh said, Let us go down, in Genesis 11, 6-8. The army of the stars fell to earth, the oppressors, Daniel 8.10. Check the concordance on that one. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, Daniel 2.43. The kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, Matthew 25.14. The Lord went into a far country, Matthew 13.24 and 25. So this far country that it's talking about, is heaven. That's clear in Isaiah 13, 8. The word translated as heaven can mean sky or starry heavens. In other words, both God and the beast came from where the stars are, outer space. So the books of Hosea and Isaiah have closed the case, and we could stop there. But there's more. Revelation 17.8 tells us that the beast will rise out of the bottomless pit. The bottomless pit represents, on one level, outer space, as we discovered in the Revelation chapter 20 examination. We're told a star will bind a comet for a thousand years in the bottomless pit of space. That's one layer of meaning. More specifically, Revelation 20 is making a direct reference to Egyptian myth when it talks about hell, the underworld, and the second death. Revelation 20.13 tells us that hell will deliver up the dead. In other words, the underworld will deliver up the dead. According to Egyptian myth, the underworld is where the star Sirius is. Therefore, it's telling us that the underworld is below the ecliptic of our solar system. According to Wikipedia, the ancient Sumerian texts portray the Anunnaki as the seven judges that sit before the throne in the underworld. That caught my attention because the book of Revelation chapters 1 through 3 says that seven angels will be judged by the Alpha and Omega. The angels who kept not their first estate are twice dead, Jude 1, 4 through 12. That's also a reference to Egyptian myth, which talks about the second death as well. Revelation 3.1 tells us that the angels of Sardis are dead, and the angels of Sardis are one of the seven angels. The seven angels, we're told in Revelation 1.20, Amos 5.8, and Job 9.9, are the seven stars of the Pleiades star system. In other words, the Bible is fairly clear that the seven angels refer to the Pleiadians. The Pleiades are not under the ecliptic. However, they are part of the constellation Taurus, which does occupy the quote-unquote underworld. Orion is also under the ecliptic, and the Egyptian myth tells us that Osiris, representing Orion, kills those who live after they have died. In other words, Orion of the underworld will kill those who die the second death, who are the angels who kept not their first estate, the Pleiadians. So, whether the Anunnaki are the seven who will be judged by the throne of the underworld or the seven judges who sit on the throne in the underworld, it seems clear that the ancient Sumerian texts tell us the Anunnaki are the seven, which the Bible tells us are the Pleiadians. Obviously, this will need to be studied in more depth. We're only scratching the surface here. But it seems clear that the Bible and parts of the ancient Sumerian and Egyptian texts corroborate each other in that both God and the beast came from outer space. The Bible tells us that God created the constellations. So, could it be that the constellations actually represent communities? So, is the Taurus constellation of the bull a community that includes the Pleiades? If so, then could it be true that the central power of the Pleiadians is located somewhere else in Taurus, below the ecliptic, in other words, in the underworld? 
and Orion, it seems, is or was at war with them. The mythology has him hunting the bull, Taurus, and also hunting and killing those who live after they are dead, the Pleiadians, according to the Bible. So, the Bible tells us the beast rises out of the bottomless pit of space below the ecliptic, that hell, the underworld, delivers up the dead, and then they fall or go down into Earth's atmosphere, where they both oppress humanity and mingle with the seed of humanity. And this fall into Earth's atmosphere happened sometime after 1945, when humans began to multiply on the Earth and the world population went exponential, Genesis 6-4. After the war in the sky, World War II, Revelation 12, 9, when the eighth king, the United Nations, rose up, Daniel 8, 23 through 25, and Revelation 17, 10 and 11, at the time of the little horn, the little country of Israel, Daniel 8, 9 and 10, and at the time of the feet and the ten kings, in the UN Millennium Goals Report 2009, that's Daniel 2, 43. And there's much more. So for more information on the fulfillments of biblical prophecy in recent times, you can see the playlist Bibles Countdown to the Meteorite and Rescue linked here. Thank you to those who make this work possible. If you like this video and want to see more like it, please consider providing support using the link below. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you later.